Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to be discussing a pre-assembled spindle cable and an actual uh, HY connector. Now this HY connector features a ceramic insert. Many of you have seen these. Many of you have these. This is a different type of connector than the one that's listed in my store. Many times, uh, potential clients believe that this connector is a standard aviation connector. It is not, nor is the one in my store. Um, when I say that, HY and other spindle manufacturers utilize these connectors and bundle them only with the units they sell. These are not readily available, and other than the ones I have, because I work with my vendor directly, you cannot purchase these typically separately unless you source and source and source, or you buy in bulk typically their units. Now, if you're lucky enough to get one, so be it. But overall, I want to save you guys the hassle and make sure you're unaware of what you're getting involved with with this connector. This is a ceramic connector, okay? That's why it's white. It's ceramic for heat. You can see here, I'm sure the camera gives you enough detail. You can actually see numbers on this connector, just like the others. Um, but again, it being white, it also has a collar right here, a locking collar. And most guys naturally assume this is an aviation connector because of the locking collar. Well, once again, it's not. And you can see here what we've got as far as the work involved in building this cable. I want to let you guys know just the amount of work that you can see here. There is triple insulated 600 volt heat shrink around the casing on top of, and you can see it slightly, it looks kind of like a snakeskin pattern. That's tin braided copper. I don't just use tin braided copper whenever I'm um, actually doing shielding. Uh, of course, that's naturally what it's designed for, but it's also an amazing way to add rigidity to a cable that has its casing removed. Now, in this particular instance, you can see here where it tapers. It gets a little larger and then it gets slightly smaller. Well, the reason it gets slightly smaller is in order to install this connector, the housing has to actually screw on to this actual plug, okay? It's not like a traditional black HY plug. When you actually insert this uh, ceramic plug into here with the collar on it, you have to rotate with the soldered leads on this plug into this housing in order to have this housing made up and screw tight together. Now, considering you're not able to do that naturally with the casing of the cable inserted in the actual stress relief, you have to have bare leads there. Now, once you have bare leads there, and I've seen this done many times, you wanna make sure that those bare leads are, are going to be reinforced so there's no excess stress on these solder connections, okay? Now, when I say that, it sounds simple enough, but you're gonna need thick wall heat shrink or you're gonna need multiple pieces of properly insulated rated heat shrink to actually go over those leads multitudes of times to make sure you add, I'm just trying to get my hand out of the way, my meat hook so you can see, add rigidity to this plug. And that's exactly what I've done here. I've added this piece here, multiple pieces, to add the rigidity on top of adding stress relief because we only have our four leads and naturally when we compress our stress relief we want to make sure that we're not engaging that stress relief into our conductors actual sheaths and when I say conductors I'm talking about the leads that are actually soldered to the plug you want to make sure that you always have a, a, a plastic substrate which of course would be heat shrink optimally in uh, once again multitudes of thickness whether you're doubling it tripling it whatever you're doing in order to have engagement from the actual uh, uh, cable stress relief because if you do not do that you risk potentially damaging the conductors casing and you will be in a world of trouble when we're dealing with three phase okay you can see here how I assembled this very very rigid now extremely rigid which is exactly what we want because when the client plugs this now into his spindle this will be rigid and come all the way over and allow him to plug in his other end which again you can see here the actual booted end with all his connectors, dual grounds once again. The dual grounds of course is coming from the shield drain and also the typical ground which is green in the, in the actual uh, cable itself. And then of course the three colors. Now being we're dealing with a three phase out and I can't emphasize this enough, three phase out means that all these leads are hot. We don't care about colors. It's irrelevant because they're all hot. U, V, and W is hot. Ground is the only one you have to worry about. Okay, so regardless of what color configuration you go with to hook up on UV and W, you're going to be golden as long as you don't hook up green. Okay, very, very simple. But again, simple to the effect of knowledge as far as hookup. 
uh, more complex in the sense that you need to understand what you're doing when we're dealing with a three-phase output. And what I say about that is this. I had another uh, past client message me, and this is interesting, from a German manufacturer of cable in a brochure explaining that you could use electrical tape in assembling a shielded cable. And I plan on posting this because I want you guys to see this. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I never ever recommend utilizing electrical tape except for temporary type repairs. Okay, and when I say that, I cannot emphasize that enough, especially with a three-phase output. Okay, when we're talking with 340, 360 volts, guys, that's a lot of power we're talking about. Okay, I cannot emphasize to you that God forbid you arc slightly instant fire or god forbid you're jolted with that involuntary muscle contraction can happen immediately and you'll be pinned to that voltage okay if you have heart problems it can stop your heart virtually instantly no different than 220 is very easy but when we get into three phase we're talking an industrial accident and many of you already realize because you work in industry there's no such thing as a small industrial accident Okay, they're like motorcycle accidents and skydiving accidents. There's no minor one. Okay, if you're, you're lucky if you walk away alive. Okay, so I'm telling you now, don't cut corners, don't half-ass this. It needs to be done correctly. You can see here plug insertion. Everything here is done correctly. We have ED704 silicone coming in here where we seal the plug to make sure we have no water um, or moisture penetration. And then, of course, our heat shrink, triple insulated, comes over here and meets exactly to the butt of the connector triple reinforce with our tin braided copper coming all the way back and once again three pieces of heat shrink and you can see our insulation rating right there 600 volts right there so again everything here has been covered to where that client does not have to worry okay the other factor is and I've said this in previous videos if God forbid you ever have a fire in your shop and your natural shop or house is insured if they find that a cable was not assembled correctly and the fire marshal goes in there you're gonna have problems because they will give you a lot of issues when it comes to insurance claims be careful guys okay be careful of admitting if you're not sure of what you're doing ask if you don't have the money to have it done properly save don't rush the good thing about CNC is you can learn it at your own pace but being impetuous always costs you money and don't be a fool don't assume things because when you assume we make an ass out of you and me and we know how that goes so again looking at this this is not done fast this takes me about two hours to assemble therefore this cable I do not charge the same as what's listed in my store okay with good reason if it takes me two hours and all the additional work and all the additional components to do this what is it going to take you if you've never done it what is it going to take you if you've done one what if what is it going to take you if you've never worked on a double shielded cable before where it has a 16 gauge ground again these are all variables that will affect your time constraint as far as assembling the unit and and once again doing it at a professional level where it's, it's going to last we want something that's durable and something that's going to be an investment for you and your machine in its stability and your business as far as where you're going you know you're only doing this once hopefully so again I hope the video has been helpful um, to all of my subscribers, I love you guys. I'll put my contact information below. Again, to contact me directly at my email is storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also contact me um, through my eBay store, eDealers Direct. You'll see it pop up on the screen. You'll have that also. But again, guys, take your time with this. Do not rush your spindle cables. These are not standard aviation connectors. I cannot emphasize that enough. I do have some more information on... Um, I want to cover later on I'm gonna see if I can integrate it in this video if I did great if I don't I'll do another video on it where it's going to discuss ground loops because I'm getting more and more questions on them um, and actually uh, covering a user's manual with uh, the spindle that actually covers how to ground in the actual user's manual okay many of you guys have HY manuals I have one and they do cover grounding uh, and I wanted to discuss that because again I think it's imperative that if we can use the user's manual, we should be. Everybody should be, there's no exclusion. You know, I've done this for years, but you guys, you're never gonna learn if you're just waiting for someone to regurgitate it. You guys having the user's manual and using that to your reference is going to make you that much stronger in education. So again, <clears throat> I hope the video has been helpful. Thank you all, take care.